Welcome to Open House with Jerry Cornejo, where we feature people, places, and things that are in the news or who should be in the news. We have a very interesting uh, program today. We have uh, two di very diverse topics. One of them is going to be about a, uh, a very famous country, but little known when it comes to uh, Filipinos. I don't think too many Filipinos have been there. And the population, the uh, population of the citizens of that country in the Philippines right now would uh, come up to around 10. <laughs> and we're talking about the Republic of Serbia. Now, uh, let me just read something about Serbia. It's a, a country which is located at the crossroads of Central and Southeastern Europe. It's right off, uh, if you know the Italian boot, it's right to the right of it, right? And it's uh, covering the south southern part of the Pannonian Plain and the central part of the Balkans. It's uh, what you call the Balkan region. So uh, it is a very diverse country. And once upon a time, uh, it was uh, overrun by the Ottoman Empire and also the Habsburgs. So it's uh, sometimes Turks and sometimes the Austrians. Well, it's a landlocked country, and it borders uh, many countries. It's landlocked, but by the way, they are uh, number one, one of the top uh, water polo teams in the world. We will ask our guests later on, how can that be? You know, you're landlocked, but I guess they have a lot of swimming pools. Anyway, uh, they are bordered by Hungary to the north, Romania and Bulgaria to the east, Macedonia to the south, Croatia, Bosnia, and Montenegro to the west. And it also borders uh, Albania through the disputed region of Kosovo. The capital of Serbia is Belgrade, and it is among the largest cities in East Central Europe. Aside from talking about Serbia, you know, we will uh, later on, uh, the best way to uh, know about the country, aside from really visiting it and looking at pictures, is to have a taste of the country. And we're going to be doing both. But first of all, let me introduce to you our guest from the Republic of Serbia, one of the few uh, Serbians in the Philippines. And uh, he is none other than uh, Marko Batricevic. Matricovic. Marco, all right. My pleasure. Welcome. Okay, so uh, Marco, tell us a little bit about uh, your country. I mean, aside from what I've already said. How, how, how is it, how is it uh, you growing up in Serbia? Basically, I was born in Yugoslavia. Mm -hmm. That was still, uh, I'm the one of the, uh, uh, the, the mid-80s generation when mm -hmm. Yugoslavia was still intact. And then in the 90s, it was split into the republics that you have mentioned uh, earlier. And now, uh, you know, in the 90s, Serbia went uh, into the war with all these uh, republics. So now it's all like separate uh, mm -hmm. republics. They stand on their own. But I still like to call myself a Yugoslav. Mm -hmm. I miss the country. And yeah. But I come from the northern part of, uh, of Serbia, which is Vojvodina. It's uh, bordering uh, Hungary. OK, what, uh, what countries comprise Yugoslavia before it split up? Um, I mean, aside from Serbia. Before this was Slovenia, mm -hmm. uh, Croatia, Bosnia, Macedonia, uh, Montenegro. Uh, Kosovo is now getting their independence. Uh, so there is, uh, did I forget any? Uh, yeah, that's about it. So all of those were part of uh, Yugoslavia. Yugoslavia? Yeah, the old Yugoslavia. OK, now I'm just curious, because uh, most of the time uh, in the Philippines, when you say Yugoslavia, they uh, think about uh, your basketball team. They think about which basketball Which is, uh, team. you know, become European champions, FIFA champions, uh, world champions. That's, that's true. So, uh, and uh, by the way, uh, one of the reasons that uh, our good friend uh, Marko Batricevic is here was because he got a uh, sports scholarship from uh, De La Salle University. He played there for three years. Yes, I was with the team. Three years? Yeah. Uh, I, first, I was in high school mm -hmm. in La Salle Greenhills. Then I graduated, went on to study university here. And I graduated two years ago. And you were, uh, you were, in, the, you were in the varsity junior team. So you were with yeah. the juniors also? I, I and then the seniors? Yes, play for juniors and seniors. And he belonged to the championship uh, basketball team of De La Salle in 2007, coached by, uh, was it Franz, Derek? Coach Franz. Franz, 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 Franz Komarin. Komarin, yes. OK, so uh, uh, what brought you to the Philippines? I mean, uh, I know it was you got a basketball scholarship, but how did it all begin? You how were playing basketball, someone saw you. I was, I was playing basketball in Serbia, and then um, you know how it is in Europe? We, we don't get university or school teams. 
you have to do either or you get to play for your club mm -hmm. and then you get to study and then um, I was looking for the opportunity to do uh, two things at the same time study and play so I was basically looking for university that will take me in and then the opportunity uh, was given to me by the group of De La Salle alumni who put things together and uh, fortunately for me I was uh, given scholarship by La Salle mm -hmm. and I'm very thankful for that. I see. Uh, so they uh, they scouted you, in other words. I mean, they saw sort you. Sort of, yes. Right. Yes. Uh, and you were. I, I'm sorry, I missed that. You were playing with what team when the, when they called you and they said, "Would you like to come to the Philippines?" I was playing for my club. Oh, uh, okay. Which, which has nothing to do with my school. This right. is Verbas, my, my my city. Okay. I was I was a junior player back then. Okay. I was just like first, second year high school, and then on my third year, I already moved to the to Manila. Okay. Now, uh, who exactly saw you? And, you know, I mean, was it uh, uh, Filipino? Yeah, Filipinos. They who they was in Serbia? Yes, they have common friends Okay. Uh, in Serbia. Then they asked those people in Serbia if they know a young kid who would like to try out in La Salle and mm -hmm. uh, be given opportunity to play. And uh, that's how it came about. Mm -hmm. So... But basketball is still a big uh, sport in Yugoslavia. Yeah, it will always be. Yeah, basketball yeah. is big. Uh, you know, the, the the last great team of Yugoslavia was in 2002 when they won the world championship, mm -hmm. beating Ar Argentina and then beating United States in the semifinals. Basically, all the sports. It's a sports nation. Mm -hmm. Sport nation. Yeah. You mentioned earlier about water polo. Right. Uh, handball, football, uh, even volleyball. We were. In the 90s, uh, one of the top top nations. Uh, how did you do? Uh, did you get? Uh, how how were you in the uh, recent uh, Summer Olympics? In the Olympics, uh, we are I think bronze in uh, or yeah bronze in in water polo. Mm -hmm. I think we got silver in uh, shooting. Okay. Any golds? Uh, no, unfortunately not. No golds. No gold. Okay. Now, uh, interesting thing: how I met uh, Mar Mr. Marko Batrisevich. Uh, well, my family and I usually look for uh, restaurants to go to uh, on weekends or whenever we can get together. And uh, one of my sons, he saw a sign somewhere in Legaspi Village in Makati. And it had this weird sign. Well, not really a weird sign. I mean, so a sign that you don't see every day. And it said, uh, Yugoslavian home cooking. So, you know, I mean, none of us have been to Yugoslavia. So we were wondering, what exactly is Yugoslavian home cooking? I myself saw that. Uh, uh, I, I, by the way, I did see it, even, you know, I mean, Possibly. separately. But, you know, I said, uh, what is this? Because I was walking towards the Shang, uh, Shang uh, Grand Shang uh, Tower. Uh, yeah. the tower. I was so going to uh, walk in that direction. Then I saw it. Then it said, you know, I'm sure very few of you, unless you've been to... Uh, to that place in Makati, it's at along Perea Street, that you will see a sign saying, Yugoslavian home cooking. Now, there's another one, Balkan in uh, Green this is Yeah, Balkan Express. This is the original. Yeah. The, the but it doesn't say place. Yugoslavian home cooking outside. It, 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 it also. does. It has, yeah. And that but was the first one. Yes. Okay. And this is just the express type, very small, 25-seater restaurant that mm. caters to uh, residential area of San Juan. Mm. So basically, we get families there. We get... Uh, kids from Xavier School and Ica and uh, yeah, but in Makati is a little uh, bit bigger and it's a full line restaurant. Okay, so anyway, so we, we saw this thing and then we decided uh, one Sunday, why don't we visit the place? So uh, my sons, my daughters-in-law and a daughter, we went there and uh, to our very, very pleasant surprise, we all enjoyed the food and we all, we know we tried to order a variety I think there were six of us, and we must have ordered at least five different things, and we all enjoyed the food. And uh, so, uh, Serbian food is uh, <laughs> is uh, very good. And by the way, uh, when we show the pictures, I'm not sure did did they show the pictures of food? No. Uh, no, no, there were no. The, the, there was no food in the menu. Pictures? No, no, in the in the beginning of the program. Um, but anyway, we will show a video because uh, when I visited, I revisited Marco. And I told him that, uh, you know, get ready and show us some of your uh, signature dishes or dishes which are very typically Serbian. In other words, if any of us would ever get to visit Serbia, these are the kinds of foods that 
you will see in homes, you will see in restaurants, and there are uh, there's even a kind of food that you will actually see in restaurants as a street food in homes. And so if we can, can we please roll the video? So here we have uh, onion based goulash. It's a beef stew. Uh, can we put the audio noodles. to that? You can see we use the very lean beef and we put some uh, noodles inside and some parsley. And it comes with a side order of our homemade bread. And is this a typical uh, Serbian dish? Yeah, this dish? is for, for the uh, northern Serbia. Okay. The one bordering with Hungary, this is the typical meal at home. So this dish is called Stav Pleskavica. It's a ground beef steak with uh, mozzarella cheese inside. It comes in uh, two versions. You can have it spicy or not spicy or even mild. Uh, in Serbia, usually we eat uh, this dish during the barbecue. It's a typical barbecue dish uh, in home backyards during birthdays, parties, and uh, other occasions. Uh, Marco, what's it, what is it made out of again? So this is made out of uh, beef. It's a ground beef, but you can have a choice of lamb as well. I will show you, I will show you the Ozin cheese. This is not a typical uh, patty where the, 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 the beef falls apart. It's, it's bind, see the chili inside, the cheese coming out. Here we have uh, chicken batak. Batak in Serbian means chicken thigh, which is a brown meat. Uh, this is a grilled, grilled uh, typical Serbian uh, chicken. We debone it and then we stuff it with uh, double smoked chicken breast, salami, mushrooms and cheese. In the restaurant we serve it with uh, rice or fries. But in Serbia we mostly eat potatoes. Is this eaten the whole year round? Yeah, you can eat this the whole year round. Just like a while ago, during the barbecue parties, we want to have a variety of, uh, of meats. So this is the sample of our chicken, chicken barbecue. Uh, you can see it's very tender. The stuffing is inside. Mushrooms, cheese. famous Serbian dish uh, called Cevapcici or Cevapi. These are the ground beef sausages. They are skinless and grilled. Uh, in here we have the, the, the two kinds of meat. The, the upper portion is lamb, the five pieces, and then under we have beef, beef sausages. Uh, this is very common in Serbia in all the bus stops, in all schools, uh, basically everywhere, in every corner you can have this uh, as your snack or as your main main meal. So it's something like street food? Street food, yeah, you can have this. Uh, but, you, but you can meal. also order it in good restaurants. Yes, you can also have it in good restaurants. This is like really, really Serbia. You can have it uh, with bread, in a, in a, like sandwich, or you can have a platter. Usually served with 10 pieces. Uh, you have the onions under and french fries. And, and, here, this. and here we have salad. This is just something to wash the, the taste mm -hmm. of the meat. It's made with uh, fresh uh, tomatoes, cucumber, and onions, uh, with olive oil and on a bed of lettuce. So it's it's very refreshing. Okay, I'm sure after that a lot of you will be uh, hungry, and uh, so don't leave yet because we're still going to be talking to Marco, and later on I'll introduce you to uh, Mr. Tim Bolton. Anyway, uh, so that was it, uh, and. There were other dishes uh, we were talking earlier. You have a version of lechon also, yes, or roast pig. But this is a little bit difficult to do. Not, mm -hmm. not, not yet at, as of the moment because you have to do the roasting. Of course, it takes right. a lot of time. Right. But yeah, so I would love to one day. Uh -huh. I mentioned that even to my friends. I would love to have a cook off with uh, Serbian lechon versus mm. Cebu lechon or Philippine lechon in general. Well, okay, I don't want to argue with you, but <laughs> yeah. I, uh, well, I hope you win. All well, the best. Good, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, you know, any kind of uh, uh, what, what's so special about uh, the way you? I, I'm sure you've seen a lot of lechons here. Yes. Well, what's special about the Serbian lechon or roast mm -hmm. pig? Uh, what do you put in there that we don't? Or uh, I think it's it's similar. It's just that we right. don't use much of uh, sweet uh, sauces or uh, we don't so have mam tomas. So it's more of it's more yeah. of the sauce. And oftentimes we serve it cold. 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 Yeah. Okay. Cold. Well. Uh, 
we serve it cold, then it becomes paksi. You know what paksi yeah. is, right? You know, that becomes paksi. What do you do with the leftover uh, pig? I mean, or the roast pig? What, once it's, uh, you just freeze it, or you just serve it cold, or you finish you, the... You, you, you usually, families usually finish it, because it's served during the, the, the times when families gather big groups of people, so it's right. usually finished. Okay. Uh, and uh, by the way, uh, better get your uh, pens and papers ready because uh, later on, before we uh, finish uh, our talk with uh, Mr. Marco Batricevic, I'm going to be giving you uh, telephone numbers that you can call just in case you want to try U Yugoslavian home cooking. Okay, it's something new. If you have a guest or, you know, with your families, you always do the, you know, the typical uh, Italian pasta and the Spanish food and the Japanese and the Chinese. Have you tried Yugoslavian home cooking? <laughs> okay, now what, what made you think of uh, coming up with, uh, you know, Yugoslavian home cooking? I mean, wha wha di what made you think that it would be successful in the Philippines, or in Metro Manila at least? Well, because I've been here 10 years and I know the Philippine diet very well. I'm, <laughs> okay. I'm a big fan of Philippine mm -hmm. foods as well, and I know they love meat, mm -hmm. and Serbia is all about meat, so, and plus my, my families into the restaurant business, so it wasn't really too hard for me setting it up. Oh, okay, so your family in Serbia is yeah, in the yeah, restaurant they, business? Yeah, they're also in the restaurant business, yeah. Okay, so so I, I called my dad, I said, can I have a couple of your recipes? Mm -hmm. He said, sure, why not? Put up the restaurant, and we started in San Juan, and after a year, we expanded in Makati. Okay, so how, how, uh, where is your restaurant in? Uh, because the one that I went to was along Pereya in yes, the Gaspi this is village. Pereira, yeah. This is just around uh, a block or two from Greenbelt, Greenbelt yes. and from the Asian Institute of Management. Correct, yeah. How about the one in, uh, excuse me, how about the one in uh, San Juan? Where well, the, exactly the, be the best landmark which San Juan people know is the, the, the house of the mayor, or Arab's okay. house, yeah, okay. President Arab's house. But it's uh, along P. Guevara, and then you have the small street called Mons. Okay, so, so Pinaglabanan around that area. Yes, right. close to Pinaglabanan. Ah, yeah, okay. you, can say that. you can approach from Wilson, you can approach from Pinaglabanan. But the street is Mons. Mons, yes. Okay. It's near Stra Strata Condominiums. Okay, and uh, you P. can they also take out, like, you know, some of those people uh, watching us right now might say, whoa, whoa, whoa sounds good, but. Uh, you know, I can't go to, uh, I'm not exactly in San Juan now or in Makati. Do you deliver? We do uh, through quick delivery. It's 212121. 212121. There's a number, yes. Okay. But better still, as, anyone, I, as I was saying earlier, uh, write this number down. What I have now here is uh, the number in Makati. So if you're around Makati, Mandaluyong, Pasay, you know, around that area, I g the number to call if you want Yugoslavian home cooking is 8460744. That's 8460744. Uh, do you cater? Not yet, unfortunately. Not yet. Not yet. So they have to really go to your restaurant or order there and Yeah, they out. can pick it up. They okay. can send their drivers to pick it up right. or they can go through the delivery company. Right. And uh, what is the number in uh, what ah, is the in number in San Juan? Uh, Do you know three the three number? Three three zero zero. Okay. Nine four five. Three three zero zero nine four five. Nine four five. So if you are nearer the San Juan area, and you want you know Yugoslavian home cooking, I mean I'm so intrigued by this. And if you uh, just saw the video, hey, it's really, it's really good food. I mean it was such a pleasant surprise. Thank you. I mean we didn't know what to expect when we went to your restaurant. There were uh, six of us. Six of us. And, uh, you know, he said, okay, here we go. But then uh, when, as I was telling you last night, even before I looked at the menu, I said, uh, do you have dark beer? <laughs> and they said, yes. I said, okay, this place is good. We're staying. <laughs> so anyway, if you're in San Juan, it's 3300945. Okay, if you're in San Juan, 3300945. And wherever you may be, you know, anywhere else in, uh, in the whole Philippines, if you're thinking of uh, going to uh, Manila, or if you want your relatives or friends to, uh, you know, uh, maybe uh, they're there uh, in Manila and they're going to fly to Zamboanga or Cebu very soon, or to Ilocos, tell them to pass by and wrap it up and take it to you, <laughs> okay? Now, cell phone, mobile number. You can text, uh, preferably just text first, okay? Try not to call, but uh, if, you can, if you want, you can call, but. Here is the mobile number where you can text if you want to ask about uh, Yugoslavian home cooking, okay? Where it is and uh, all the details. It's 0917 
547-4188. Okay, that's 0917-547-4188. And most of the time, you're going to get a direct answer from uh, Mr. Marco Batricevic. Okay, so anyway, Marco, what can they expect? Uh, you know, as I was saying earlier, I mean, not too many people, not too many Filipinos, including myself. You know, uh, I'll, 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 I'll try to sneak in uh, Serbia in my bucket list of uh, places to go to. But then uh, uh, I was told by uh, your friend Dragan okay. that uh, you can take Singapore Airlines to Serbia. From, from, so from Manila to Singapore, Singapore to London. There's many ways to get to Serbia. Last time yeah. I was going uh, via Moscow. Okay. But you no, Manila to where? And what Manila, airline? Hong Kong. Okay. And then Aeroflot to Moscow, Moscow, Belgrade Street. Okay. And you can go also uh, Lufthansa, Frankfurt, Hong Kong, Frankfurt. Frankfurt, Frankfurt the straight to Belgrade. Yes. And same thing, there's also London to Belgrade. Yes. Okay, so uh, as long as you, there's no direct flight though. No direct okay. flight, unfortunately. And if you want to get uh, just a taste, literally, as I was saying earlier, you know, one of the best ways to uh, uh, appreciate a country or a culture is literally you know, to share or to know about their taste. Like, uh, you know, I mean, you have a good idea of, uh, of uh, Italy when you have good Italian food. You know, you'll have a good idea of uh, China with good Chinese food, Japan with Japanese food. So, you know, with Serbian food or, would you call this Serbian food or Yugoslavian food? Yugoslavian, better, yeah. It's Yugoslavia. Because so if you, go to, if you go to all those other places. They probably have the, the, the same thing. Okay, so not just Serbia. Yeah. Ah, okay, so it's like, uh, it's like it's uh, like Sinigang or uh, Dinuguan. It's all over. Right, it's all over. You can have it in Manila, in Bulacan, yes. in uh, Ilocos, in Zamboanga. Okay, so uh, what can they expect when they go to your restaurant? What else will they taste? Is it you don't have any other dishes, but well, you, you have been there. You know the place is not intimidating. You don't need to dress up to go there. In fact, I work in my shorts most of the time. Okay. So you can just expect uh, good meals. Mm -hmm. at pro hopefully, we are reasonable in price. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think you can expect to get full for sure. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, uh, one thing is also you have uh, good servings. Good servings. You yes. know, you generous sure servings. So, again, the name of the restaurant is Balkan. And uh, you can, uh, there's one along Perea Street in the Gaspi Village. And there's one along Mons Street in uh, San, Juan, San Juan, okay, near the, near the Pinaglabanan area. And uh, if you want to get in touch with them again, telephone number is 846-0744. That's in Makati in San Juan. It's 33-00945. And uh, mobile number 0917-547-4188. Thirty seconds to say hello to the Filipino people and invite them to your place. Well, uh, for all those interested, if you like what you saw on the photos and uh, you want to have a taste of Serbia, please feel free to visit Balkan. Uh, you can approach me. You can say that you have seen me on TV and that you came to try the food, and everyone is welcome. All right. And we have had like a lot of uh, different nationalities that came in, from Japanese to Europeans to other Asian countries, even from Africa, from all over the world. Okay. Yeah. Is there a special greeting, like in, uh, in, uh, in France, you say bon appétit. What do you say in... Uh, uh, we say priatno. 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 And that means? That means bon appétit. Ah, okay, bon appétit. So priatno. Priatno. All right, so thank you very much, uh, Marco. Thank you for all right, me. and uh, definitely uh, my friends and I and relatives will be going to Balkan soon. My pleasure. And uh, so... Stay with us. When we come back, we're going to talk about, uh, well, something as pleasant as uh, <laughs> food. And this is education, you know, from uh, food for the belly. Now we go to food for the mind. And uh, we have the superintendent of the Aguinaldo International School with us. So you're watching Open House with Jerry Cornell, where we feature people, places, and things that are in the news or who should be in the news. And we'll be back right after this. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Open House with Jerry Cornejo, where we feature people, places, and things that are in the news or who should be in the news. Well, earlier, if you were with us, we were talking about uh, food for the body. Very nice, Yugoslavian uh, home cooking. And we had with us uh, Marco 
Patricevich, all right? And now, you know, as important, if not more important in many ways, is uh, food for the mind. And right now, worldwide, in the Philippines, not only in, uh, you know, in the Philippines and worldwide, there is a revolution going on when it comes to uh, education uh, because of, I guess, uh, information technology and uh, other points of view about how important education is and what the curriculum should be. And uh, we have, uh, well, one of the global or international schools, not very well known yet, but it is growing in its student population. It's part of the Emilio Aguinaldo College, and uh, it is called the uh, Aguinaldo International School. It's located in Manila, somewhere around the Malate Paco area. And uh, before we uh, introduce you to our guest, who is the superintendent of the Aguinaldo International School, let's catch a glimpse of the school and their activities through the photos uh, that we have, if we can uh, Roll them, please. Uh, we can show the pictures. There you go. The Aguinaldo International School. There's Kita. <laughs> okay. My daughters. Right. So uh, I, I, we, we can talk about this now. You have a swimming pool, obviously. Yes. And you have a computer room. We have two computer rooms. Okay. And this would be uh, your the cultural presentations. Yes. Uh, Th this is actually, the, is this a campus? That's the, yeah, that's the, the, the front of the school. Okay. How big is the school, by the way? Uh, the school's growing. When I started there, we were approximately 100 students. Okay. Now we're getting up towards 220 students. Okay. Now, physic and you have a wall, wall, uh, the wall climbing uh, facility. That, that particular, that particular no. one was on a field trip. Oh, okay. Okay. This photo shows the outreach program that we do. Mm. Uh, so we're working with less privileged children, mm. um, trying to make a difference in our community. This is the school pool. That's the school swimming pool. It's huge. Uh, it's Olympic size? Uh, almost. Okay. It's uh, along with our theater. It's one of our best resources. All right. This is our pink shirt day. It's an anti-bullying campaign to promote uh, friendship and kindness. So uh, everybody's in a pink shirt for this event to uh, to really take a stand against bullying. Okay. And uh, from what I've read, you have something like ten nationalities. Uh, ten plus now, ten and plus. Uh, here on the stage, uh, we we all have a few nationalities. In fact, one of the stars of the play, she's okay. from Croatia, which is the same part of the world as your previous guest. Okay, L let me uh, introduce our guest uh, for this segment, and it's called uh, Global Education, and we have with us the superintendent of the Aguinaldo International School, Mr. Tim Bolton. So, Tim, welcome. Thank you very much. I'm okay, glad so, to be here. So, Tim, uh, when I first met uh, Tim, uh, maybe around 10 years ago or so, or maybe eight years ago, he was uh, then part of the faculty of uh, the International School in Makati. That's right. Right. And uh, from there, he moved on and he became the superintendent of the Aguinaldo International School. But prior to uh, international school, you've always been in the field of education. Uh, could you tell us about that, uh, Tim? Sure. Um, I started in Canada, and uh, I was lucky to work in an international school in Canada. So uh, once you get a taste of international education, it's so exciting, you know, you, you experience so many new things. So I really got the travel bug, and I really uh, decided that, for me, international schools uh, are really an ideal place uh, to, to be a teacher. So after Canada, I went to uh, India. I taught in India. I did some summer teaching in uh, Yugoslavia, actually, where Marco was yeah. from. Uh, and following that, I had the chance to come to the Philippines. And uh, in fact, the Philippines is the, the one country where I've stayed the longest. I, I love it here. It's a great place to teach. OK. Now, when you say uh, international school, I guess that just basically means that you have uh, your students or you know are composed of different nationalities am I right uh, it's a variety of things okay. uh, I think the the hallmark of an international school is that some of your teachers come from different countries uh, your student population comes from different countries and your teaching styles your teaching methodologies uh, tend to be uh, a collection of ideas that have come from perhaps England perhaps America Australia uh, but also uh, the host country as well Okay, so what is different about uh, the way you, uh, your curricul curriculum 
in uh, Aguinaldo International School as uh, compared to uh, the other schools in Manila, Metro Manila, or throughout the Philippines. Okay. First uh, of all, it's an exclusive school because uh, your your tuition is not exactly you know one. I mean, you have to be somehow of means to be able to uh, go to your school. In other words, if you're earning minimum wage, you will not be able to afford the school. So you have to be at least middle, man middle management to be able to yeah. afford the tuition? In, in our case, we really yeah. try and target the school mm -hmm. um, for more or less ordinary Filipino families. Uh, okay. uh, of course, there's a big range of families, and not all families can afford it. Mm -hmm. But we're not trying to cater to those, you know, those ultra-rich families. Yes. Uh, and in fact, our tuition fees are probably 10 times less mm -hmm. than some of the more expensive international schools. So we're really not trying to target uh, the upper class. We're trying to actually bring an international education mm. down to many levels of, uh, of Philippine society because we believe uh, that there's value there for the Philippines. Okay, so uh, from uh, approximately 200 students, what is the percentage of Filipinos as compared to uh, foreign nationals out of the 200? Uh, at the moment, we are primarily Filipino. So more uh, than half or 70%? Oh yeah, yeah, it's still more than half. But okay. uh, we are really, in fact, we have not strongly marketed yet to the expat community. Mm -hmm. uh, we've just started to do that now. So um, uh, for example, our, our faculty is becoming more international. We have a teacher from New Zealand. We have a teacher from Australia. Um, so we're starting to become more international. And as time goes by, we'd like to have a nice mixture. OK, now aside from, uh, aside from Filipinos, what other nationalities uh, are enrolled in your school? Uh, we have a uh, student from Croatia. We have uh, a student with a Norwegian passport. Mm -hmm. We have American passports. Uh, so it's a real mixture. And uh, you have Japanese, Asian, yes, Korean? Yes, we have Japanese, Taiwanese. Uh, we have Chinese. Mm -hmm. We have a real mix. OK, and uh, right now, the big thing uh, that's happening in Philippine education is the K-12 curriculum. Mm -hmm. But you've always had that uh, in your school. By the way, how old is your school? How old is the uh, Aguinaldo International School? Well, the history of the school, uh, it began as a, a science high school okay. for gifted students. When was this? Uh, this is at least 10 years ago. Okay. Then uh, a few years back, the decision was made to um, make it more of an international school. Uh, so it's gone through a transition from being uh, a science school focused school. on science right. to a school that's more diverse and, and trying to bring in different cultures. Okay, and uh, so what is it exactly now? You're doing the K-12 now. Uh, we're, so we're, you're transitioning we're, there. we're transitioning. Um, the school has always only gone to fourth year because most of our graduates, especially back when it was a science school, they were going to local universities. But now with the K-12, it's going to give students the opportunity to either go to uh, colleges and universities in Manila or abroad. Okay. Now, before uh, I ask you some, uh, you know, some uh, questions that uh, are out of the box, let me ask you something though about uh, people who are watching us now or listening to you right now. Why? Uh, what reason would they have to enroll their children? in your school, the Aguinaldo International School, right now? I mean, because I'm sure there are parents right now who are not satisfied with the kind of education that their children are getting. And uh, the range of your education is from elementary or grade school all the way to high school, am I right? Yes. OK, so right now, without a doubt, there are people watching us now who you know, are thinking, well, you know, I'm not very happy with the school my son or my daughter, my children are in right now. And they probably are thinking, uh, hey, you know, what school do I go to? What reason would they have to go to the Aguinaldo International School, your school? Well, I think first and foremost, mm. uh, the most special thing that we offer is quality teaching. We're very careful about the teachers that we hire. Mm. Uh, and I can honestly say I've never worked with a nicer, uh, more talented, and committed group of teachers. Our mm. teachers work incredibly hard. They love children, and they're passionate. So first and foremost, I think when you're looking for a school, you should look at the teachers. After that, our classes uh, have an average class size of about 10 kids, only 10 students per class. 10. So that okay. means that the teachers mm. can really get to know each child, to know their learning style, to know their interests, and really teach to their level, teach to their interests and talents. So I think that would also be a really important thing about our school. So the ratio of uh, students to teachers is 10 to 1, average? Uh, that would be the average right now. Okay. Uh, our and maximum is yeah, 15. Maximum 15. 
Okay. And uh, so go ahead. I mean, why, again, uh, why would I enroll my children who are in grade school or high school in your well, school? Well, in addition, in addition mm -hmm. to having good teachers and small classes, uh, we have a good curriculum. Our curriculum uh, has aspects of the deaf ed. In fact, we do most of the deaf ed, mm -hmm. but we augment that. We enrich it. So in addition to some of the things that might be in the deaf ed curriculum, we're bringing in material and information from Africa, from South America, and we're getting kids to think globally, getting them to make connections, to see the Philippines as a beautiful country, uh, mm -hmm. an important country, but to see how it connects to the greater world. And so we try and go a little bit further than the basic uh, curriculum. Okay. Now, uh, I know of uh, certain schools now who uh, will not make it a requirement, but uh, they don't have the traditional blackboards anymore. You know, the blackboard and chalk. What they have now are tablets and uh, personal computers. Is this the teaching environment that you have uh, in your school? Well, uh, you know, the world is changing so fast. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, like everyone else, we're transitioning. So, uh, we've implemented tablets. Uh, we're running tablets now in the high school. Every student has one. Mm -hmm. uh, we have computer rooms. We have wireless Wi-Fi. So kids can carry around their laptops wherever they go and be connected to the internet. Um, things are definitely changing. And uh, right now we have a ICT coordinator. Uh, her job is to work individually with teachers. ICT, excuse me. Information communication technology. Okay. Mm -hmm. So her job is to make sure that every teacher is using uh, technology effectively in every grade level and every subject. So uh, the kids don't just go to a computer class and study computers there. But uh, in computer class, everything they do connects to another subject so that it's very practical and very real. And they don't do this in other schools? Um, I can't speak for uh, other schools, but uh, I've never seen it. I've, I've, okay. I've always seen that uh, kids learn about computers in computer class. And they sure, they might use computers, but our computer curriculum is integrated through the other subjects to make sure that every teacher is using it, mm -hmm. to make sure that every subject is being enhanced by it. Because when the kids grow up, whether they're doing science or math or whether they're in broadcasting, they're going to need to be able to use technology yes. in whatever sector they're in. So what is, uh, you mean all grades, so from the first grade all the way to fourth year high school, they have tablets? Right now we're in the high school only. But okay. the idea is that we're going to extend that uh, probably down to grade four next school year. Yeah. and then continually uh, moving down as it's appropriate. So what, uh, what tools, uh, when it comes to ICT, with, uh, with the children, with the students, and from first grade to seventh grade or eighth grade be in, what would they be using? Uh, it kind That's of spirals. So for example, okay. they might start PowerPoints as, as young as grade one. Okay. But then as they get to grade two, grade four, grade eight, they'll continue to use that program but they'll use it with more sophistication. I see. So right now, the first grades, uh, they still have the whiteboards and the blackboards. And we uh, have whiteboards. We're bringing in smart boards. Mm -hmm. uh, everything is gradually becoming more and more computerized. Uh, I think we can expect in a very short amount of time that we don't have textbooks, that we have very little paper, that everything's happening on computer screens. With our tablets, teachers can watch the work that kids are doing as they do it, even if they're doing it at home. They can give feedback as the kid is uh, entering information. So uh, they can be coaching and mentoring uh, and, and helping the child. So the child doesn't have to get stuck and spend three hours on their homework. They can uh, actually monitor as they go. OK. Are there uh, any subjects in your school that uh, deals with uh, uh, character formation, uh, values? Uh, because usually in uh, schools like, for instance, uh, La Salor Ateneo, they would have uh, religion classes. Mm -hmm. You know, in your school, uh, would you have any religion classes? We have religion in our curriculum. Okay. Um, but we, act we actually look at uh, a variety of religions mm -hmm. because in our school we have diff people of different faith. Okay. So that's one aspect of international schools is that uh, you're very tolerant of others' beliefs, that everybody's entitled to their beliefs, and that you come to understand uh, where different people are coming from. Um, what, was your, what was the question before? No, I mean, uh, what subject would you have for ah. character formation yeah, and values? For, for, uh, uh, yeah. We integrate values education throughout every subject, every level. In fact, character is uh, a major component of their final grade. So uh, the character that we look at, um, 
we have um, things like respect, responsibility, leadership, motivation, working in teams, collaborating. And when you look at those values, when you look at those character traits, if children are good at those things, they will reach their full potential. Mm -hmm. So what we're trying to do is shift the focus from uh, letter grades, obsessing over getting high letter grades. We're shifting that focus onto what could you do to be a better person? What can you do to be a better learner? Mm -hmm. Because if that's what you focus on, the grades will happen, the grades will come. So it's not that we don't care about success, mm -hmm. we really do. Um, our goal and something that we really uh, aspire to, uh, to instill in kids is that to strive for excellence. But excellence comes through character, not just wishing for a high grade. So, yeah. Okay, now when it comes to grades, how exactly? I mean, do they have uh, the traditional report cards? Mm -hmm. And uh, how is it? I mean, numerical, uh, percentage, A, B, C, one, two, three. It's, it's, it's an amazing coincidence. Mm -hmm. uh, over the last year or so, we put a lot of time into trying to redevelop our grading system and our uh, assessments. And when we reached our, fin our final product, we were very pleased with it. And then DEP-ED, the Department of Education, released a system that was almost the same. Uh, so the minds over at DEP-ED, uh, I'm, I'm pleased to say, are, are really, in my opinion, cutting edge and, and uh, really uh, aware of the new developments in education. So our grading system uh, uses letter grades, but they're descriptive. Mm -hmm. So one of the grades is B for beginning, D for developing, uh, A for advanced. That's the same system that DEPED has now implemented. Okay, now uh, one more thing. I mean, uh, I think that uh, the Filipino family would be uh, very interested in or would pay uh, major attention to aside from character, values, formation, uh, studying religion, would be discipline. You know, how are you, uh, how do you handle discipline in your school? Like, uh, there are uh, some schools that would be uh, uh, what you might call liberal, and there are those who would be uh, disciplinarian in nature. I in your school, how would you describe the uh, handling of uh, discipline? Would you consider yourselves or the school to be disciplinarian or more liberal, or how do you handle it actually? Well, I would say we're balanced. Mm -hmm. um, we don't simply police children. Mm -hmm. We don't simply punish children. It's a combination of tools. So first and foremost, we talk it out. Mm -hmm. um, we explain to the children when they've done something wrong, that uh, when they act like that, how does it make other feel, uh, others feel? And so we try and talk with them. We try and develop them. Uh, we also have a parallel system. We have uh, um, minor infractions and major infractions. Mm -hmm. and. We have a system in place so that right. if, if you do have students that are uh, habitually breaking rules, then we deal with them through uh, our mm -hmm. procedures. But uh, at the same time, we don't only act like policemen. We also act like mentors, trying to develop their right. character at the same time. So, but would you call yourself lenient or strict? I mean, like if I were a parent, then I'm, I'm saying, you know, I'd like my kid to be in an atmosphere that would be, you know, like more like my home lenient. Or they would say, no, I would like, you know, I'm a disciplinarian. And so I would like to put my kid in a school which uh, enforces discipline or would be more disciplinarian than lenient. You know, so uh, where, where would you be? Or how would you address that if parents are thinking that right now about your school and about enrolling in your school? Well, I, the word disciplinarian to mm. me sounds a little bit like a policeman. Okay. Uh, and I see our teachers as being more like coaches, more like role models. Um, and so that's the first line. You try and deal with things as much as you can through talking it out, conflict resolution. However, there are cases where uh, you have certain children that will re repeatedly make a mistake. Mm -hmm. Now, sometimes that's because of a counseling issue. Uh, maybe it's a behavioral issue and they need to work with a, uh, with a guidance counselor. Other times, maybe it's an attitude issue. So we really try and figure out what is the cause of the problem and then channel it appropriately. Either the teacher deals with it the guidance counselor deals with it, or it can go through the, uh, the office and it can be sanctioned in some way. So um, I think we're balanced. I think we're fair. I think uh, uh, we try and blend the, the, the best of both systems. Mm. Uh, when you're, how many, uh, 
high school seniors have you graduated? How many classes? Or haven't you graduated high school seniors yet? I mean, you're still in... Well, we have not switched to K-12 yet. Yes. Uh, that's coming soon. Okay. Uh, but our fourth years have graduated uh, successfully for 10 years plus. And I've gone on to college. Mm -hmm. And how, uh, if you, were you able to have some kind of monitoring system on how they did in uh, different colleges? Of course, uh, not all of them will go to the Emilio Aguinaldo College. I mean, they go diverse yep, they colleges. Go, our kids yeah. go all over the place. Right. And um, I don't, on the top of my head, I don't have any details on that for right, you. Right. But, but our goal, and one of our purposes, mm. is to be a school that will help children have a wide selection of college. Mm. Whether they want to go to top schools in Manila, or if they want to go to top schools abroad, mm. we want to make that uh, avenue open to them. Okay. And, uh, well, I wanted to talk to you about something like, uh, do you think uh, the present, uh, next time I have you here, I just got a note saying we just have a minute. I was going to ask you, uh, you know, because uh, I personally believe that, uh, uh, of course, you have to work within certain parameters. You have to work with the Department of Education. But uh, I am sure you have your own ideas that are not exactly parallel with the Department of Education with or with traditional education. And that's what we'll talk about next time. Sure. But now, but now uh, Mr. T Tim Bolton, uh, superintendent of the Aguinaldo International School. Uh, you have your audience here. You have the Filipino people. And uh, what would you like to tell them about your, your school or inviting them to your school, please? Well, I would just say that uh, our school uh, welcomes all kinds of people. Mm -hmm. uh, we have great resources. We have a wonderful theater, uh, an excellent swimming pool, the best teachers I've ever met. And uh, if you ever want to come by, I'd be happy to show you around. And um, that's uh, about it. Okay, before, the, uh, before we end, uh, what is your website again? Uh, www.aisedu.ph. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. okay, so that's uh, www.aisedu.ph. Uh, Aguinaldo International School dot edu dot ph. Any phone number that they could, uh, any landline? Uh, probably the best is uh, 0915. Okay. 23. Yes. 38. Yes. 443. Okay, so 0915 to get in touch or to inquire about uh, Aguinaldo International School, or you could go to www.ais.edu.ph. So with that, well, we've had our fill of uh, Yugoslavian home cooking and uh, global education with our guests, uh, Marko Batrisevic and uh, the superintendent of the Aguinaldo International School, Mr. Uh, Tim Bolton. So, Tim, thank you very much. Thank you. We'll have you again. Next time, we'll uh, be talking about the uh, other side of education, out-of-the-box education. Okay. Sure. So, thank you very much for staying with us during the past hour. I'm Jerry Cornejo. And uh, until next week, we will uh, give you again people, places, and things that are in the news or who should be in the news. I love you. God bless you. Bye-bye.